Hewitt, our regular Monday guest on all things foreign policy and everything else. Of course, foreign policy expert Stephen Yates with the D.C. International Advisory. Stephen, good afternoon. Hi, Dana. Great to be back with you. Good to talk with you. So did the, did the Egyptian protest, did the Egyptian revolution fail when you look at the results of their uh, first uh, big post-Mubarak presidential election? I still consider this to be a work in progress, but the direction is definitely not in favor of U.S. interests. We've had basically an administration that has taken half measures to no action to influence events. And, of course, when you topple a dictator, usually the strongest force that's able to organize and shape things after the fact tend to be bad actors, and in this, in this part of the world, Islamist groups. So the Muslim Brotherhood is emerging with a handle on a lot of elements of power. The military is balancing it to a degree, uh, but a lot remains to be seen in terms of whether the military plays a role like it did in Turkey that we might be able to live with in a certain sense. But a, a Muslim Brotherhood victory, uh, and it's still claimed victory by them, the right. election appears to be close. Uh, but their their advancement to political power is not good for U.S. interests. Exactly. And is this why uh, we had the we saw the Egyptian military assume control and at least in the interim for for now because there's this there's these two factions within Egypt and there's all of this discussion of civil unrest because of these elections. Is that because they're saying that they're going to hand power over to the winner of the presidential election by the end of June? So a, a two parter question, I guess. Is it did the military assume control? Control because of this? And do you really think that they will, uh, whoever ends up, I think they're still counting ballots, whoever ends up winning, do you think that they will transfer power? I think they'll transfer some powers. I think the military has stated very clearly that they'll reserve some executive functions, mostly around the budget for and the role of the military. They sort of claim the constitutional right to intervene if things start to go too far. Again, this is sort of modeled after what was the case in Turkey. During the Cold War, you had communists on one side and Islamists on the other, and if things started to go too far, the military could intervene in the name of stability, national unity, or any other uh, kind of papered-over excuse in order to reestablish order. Uh, the military has that capability in Egypt now, but it won't have it forever if, these, uh, if this new government comes into power. And of course, what they've been saying in Arabic, as opposed to Western reporters, sometimes is quite shocking. They begin rallies with anti-Semitic songs, uh, they talk about uh, this being a step toward an Islamic caliphate, with a capital in Jerusalem. So, I mean, th this is this is not just some local political movement that just won uh, because they had a better ground game. This is part of a larger movement that's of concern. Exactly. And and I look at uh, a, a lot of the propaganda and discussion going on right now in Egypt. There's a lot of the youth saying that uh, they're going to protest and there's a lot of bitter arguing over well, as they still go over the ballot counts and try to determine who won. Uh, there are some in Egypt who are saying that if it it is revealed that the Muslim Brotherhood in there, and I love how they're the name of their party, by the way, Stephen, is what the, the Freedom and Justice Party, uh, that if yeah. they if they end up winning that. Egypt will become the next Afghanistan. Is that an exaggeration in your estimation? Well, I can't help at first uh, sort of admiring that anyone aspires to become Afghanistan. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that is a whole mix of complications that I don't think anyone really seeks. Um, now, uh, I don't think that Egypt is quite in the same mix. Egypt has a, a, a real basis for an economy, whereas in Afghanistan, a much more brutal existence with enormous role of illegal narcotics and other kinds of factors. Uh, so Egypt, obviously, is heading through very difficult period ahead. And, and having Islamists in power can't be good for business in, say, the uh, tourism industry. Uh, but uh, you know, Egypt is a, is a larger country with a real economy with real prospects if they don't have bad governance, which right. they may be trending towards. Right. Now, I, I don't know if it has anything to do with the, you know, the fact that the Muslim Brotherhood is you know, claiming victory in Egypt or what it is. But now, of course, there are all of the news stories going on with what's happening with the Egyptian and Israeli border, uh, the attack that took place and uh, several people dead, uh, you know, including uh, some Israeli security forces, so on and so forth. Israel is saying that the border, there's you know, a, a dire circumstances at the border. Is this related to the election or is this something that has been uh, consistently ongoing and there really, you know, just there really isn't any heightened aggression there except just more news coverage? Well, I mean, we've known that the border areas there as well as Gaza generally have been areas of political protest, and sometimes there'll be 
movements that will clash uh, that really are trying to gain attention, negotiating posture. But that border is actually one of the real tests about what kind of an Egypt we're dealing with and whether Israeli or ally interests are going to be challenged with this change. I mean, really, one of the arguments to have Mubarak remain in place was to keep the peace with Israel at the border. Uh, and uh, the Islamist parties, uh, they've campaigned as if they've changed their colors. In fact, representatives of the Republican establishment and Democrat establishment with McCain, Graham, and their pals had gone over and met with the Muslim Brotherhood, which sort of gave room for the Obama White House to meet with people from the Muslim Brotherhood. So they're treating them as if they're normal, when in fact they have their roots in, uh, in interests that are absolutely hostile to Israel and probably to our security. So I think it's a real test. Does the Egyptian military play the stabilizing role and keep the peace of Israel? Or do the Islamists, once they have a taste of power, push their agenda in ways that I think will be very problematic for the Obama administration? Is there, Are the military and the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, are they I, – I, I'm getting the feeling that they're actually kind of at odds uh, and that the military, because they assumed, I mean, such sweeping power and so very quickly when it looked as though the Muslim Brotherhood was going to be claiming victory in this, uh, it, it, are they at odds here? I think they are in the following sense. I mean, the military – at its core, at the most professional level, are nationalists. Uh, when you look at the Islamist groups, they actually are putting an interpretation of theology above their country. Uh, and they, uh, they collude with groups in the region that definitely don't have Egypt's interests at, at heart. Uh, and so I think that there is this clash between what it means to be Egyptian and to be a nationalist and what it means to be a part of a broader movement. And I think that our uh, bet actually has to be on the side of the nationalists. Wow. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see, watch this unfold and see what happens when we come to the end of June and the military is going to have to transfer power. And it's going to be very interesting to see, too, if the Muslim Brotherhood actually keeps that victory. I, I, that Do you think that's a legitimate victory if they do, if it does come out that their candidate wins? I, I just I, for a party that used to be banned and seemed to have such public opinion against them, I find it a little difficult to believe that they would actually in a legitimate election win a presidential election in Egypt? Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's very, very difficult for the public in Egypt to choose. We'll have to see what proportion of the population actually participates at the voting age. Mm, true. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, they're choosing between basically the remnants of, an, of, of a regime that they didn't want continued and a scary alternative. Uh, and so uh, I think that having it close is actually in some ways, a reason for hope for the future. I mean, really, the Islamists ran away with the parliamentary elections. And if this is at least close, it gives some sense that the rest of the country might be prepared to stand up. Well, I, I definitely hope so. Stephen Yates, D.C. International Advisory. Always a pleasure and uh, love having your perspective on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Dana. I right, talk to you again soon. Take care.